Hello and welcome to Squad, where we are back for another happy Monday. It's sunny where I am right now. I hope it's sunny where all of you are for another Squadcast. I'm Camille. Joining me is Aaron Caboose, Malik, and Alex Radpuppy. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Pretty good. How are you? Great. The sun is really good. I am I'm recovering from an almost heart attack uh, that I had late last week. We'll talk about that <laughs> because oh, okay. it has to do with one of our topics today. Let me run it down for chat. Today we'll be talking <laughs> about the PlayStation 5 event coverage and overview. That may have almost resulted into me having a heart attack. Um, Spider-Man Miles Morales, <laughs> as well as uh, PlayStation 4 over PlayStation 5, the rollover and availability. We'll be talking more PlayStation 5 news, um, as well as the pricing, specifically the pricing and the availability, and maybe some uh, late Xbox news that we also got this morning that may change how everyone was looking at that showcase that PlayStation had late last week. And then we're going into some League of Legends uh, lore, nice. as well as Worlds. I know Alex is super excited about that. You usually have to <laughs> It through us just nerding about <laughs> like, I learn a lot okay <laughs> <laughs> but now we are gonna learn from you so it's all gonna be good a uh, chat I want to remind you guys at home that if there's any clippable moments make sure to tweet those out to us at squad state because you know we get very animated up in the face area as well as with all these topics make sure that you let your voice be heard in chat or on Twitter we'll be checking that as well all right Let's get to it because we have a lot to cover. Firstly, we have to talk about the fact that PlayStation had another showcase. Of course, that came late last week. The yep. news of the showcase leading up to it was highly anticipated. I think last week on the podcast, we talked about we're waiting to see what uh, PlayStation will do in response to Xbox revealing their price point for their new consoles. Uh, so this gave us that price point. We're not going to go into that just yet because guess what? We're teasing you just like PlayStation did. They teased oh. us the whole way through that showcase before <laughs> they got to the price. So I'm sorry, chat. You're going to have to wait about our thoughts for the price point. What I do want to talk about, though, is all of the just amazing news that came out of that showcase. You know, I've always said it. PlayStation knows how to entertain when it comes to these showcase. I think yep. they have it down packed to an equation that works really well from them. And they have not they have not under delivered. So I'm very proud of this last showcase. They opened up with revealing Final Fantasy uh, 16. Yeah. I, wow. ha, yeah. I'm a Final Fantasy <laughs> fan, okay? But I have to say 16 was kind of taking uh, steps from 14, which is their MMO, but this is not an MMO. It's actually a full-fledged game from my understanding, but they're making it in that medieval kind of time, old English language that really separates me from Final Fantasy. How did yeah. you guys feel about this Final Fantasy news? I don't know enough about the franchise to probably provide like an educated opinion, mm -hmm. but it looked very different from what I understand Final Fantasy to be. And that's why when I was watching it, like when it first popped up and I saw the character models, I was like, that's Final Fantasy, right? And then I saw that it was like <laughs> old timey. And I don't know if there's been an M rated Final Fantasy game, but it looked like a little gory in some places. So I was like, is Dark. this Final Fantasy? And yeah. then I saw those those animals that you ride the on. The yeah. so I, was like, I was like, this is Final Fantasy, right? And then I just <laughs> saw more medieval stuff, and I was like, wait, is this Final Fantasy? <laughs> what is happening? And then finally, you see the title card. It's like, okay, oh, all right. So I was just I was just really confused watching yeah. that. But I mean, it looks. It looks pretty cool. Um, you don't have to say it, it looks the same cool kind of game. Final Fantasy. <laughs> it's okay. It's it, it is. Oh, you really don't like it. Yo, I was live reacting to this, and like when it opens up, obviously it doesn't show the title of the game. Mm. So I was just watching this, and I'm like, I am not interested. I could care less. I'm like checking Damn. my Twitter. Like I'm so <laughs> uninvolved. As soon as they dropped Final Fantasy, well, as soon as I saw the Chocobos, I'm like, wait. This is like <laughs> a, maybe it's an update to 14 or something like that. Like their MMO, maybe that's happening there because I don't follow that. And then yeah. when it showed Final Fantasy 16, I'm like, 
I need this. I need to get it. I need to pre-order it. Like I just completely switched because of the franchise, but I've come to terms that I don't have to like it just because I'm a fan of the franchise. How did you feel Malik? Malik? Uh, I want to, I want to see what the story is. I think Mm -hmm. final fantasy is one of those staples for PlayStation gamers. I'm it's one of those titles that's been around forever um, I have played a few of them, but I don't follow the story because it's just, it's all over the place. Yes. Um, it's almost as bad as How Kingdom Hearts you? story. Yeah, you can't follow Nothing's it. as bad as Kingdom Hearts story. Nothing, yeah, nothing it's can so beat bad. that, but Final Fantasy is close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it I'm, is. I'm excited for it. I think that Final Fantasy always builds great worlds. They always have in- interesting stories to tell. There's always intriguing characters. I, I think regardless of what the scenery is and where it sits within the Final Fantasy world, I think it'll be a great standalone game. Mm-hmm. I want to see what kind of story aspects they're going to draw in from previous titles. Yeah. Um, and they always seem to do some sort of cinematic in the last five years for their new releases. So I'm mm-hmm. excited to see what kind of cinematics they bring with this too, to kind of tease fans and get them you know, involved with this newest series. But like you said, I wasn't super interested interested and then i saw the final fantasy title card and i was like hmm i i might have to check that out because it it, yeah it it was it looks cool but at the same time i feel like final fantasy is one of those games where you have to try at least an hour of it before you can say "Mm, not for me i would have to say like you have to try like three hours of a game just because usually it starts off a bit slow especially if they're Mm -hmm. introducing new mechanics um but yeah i think we could pretty all much over like agree on this one that it's very different than what we know a Final Fantasy game to be. However, I do think it was smart of PlayStation to open up with this because we knew that there was a Final Fantasy 16 coming out. We just didn't know where we would see that, if that would be with um, Square Enix or like if, if they would do just their own reveal. But um, it, it was smart to open up with that. They then went into more uh, Spider-Man, which I know <laughs> you're just excited about. We'll talk more in yep. detail about that. Yes after yeah. but they did yeah sorry go ahead alex oh no i was just wondering is the for final fantasy 16 like is the gameplay like the remake or like is it gonna be turn-based or, or i liked how in the remake it was like half turn-based half like kind of free roam I they think showed it's... they didn't show the ui when they were showing like what looked like bits of gameplay so i but... don't know I would anticipate it to be more like 15. Um, Mm -hmm. And if they adapt elements of the remake, then I think we'd see that. Uh, Malik, I think you were about to say something. I was going to say, I think it's going to be a blend because I I think that Final Fantasy fans would go on a riot if there wasn't some sort of (laughs) turn-based combat system. And also, too, I don't think... And this could be completely wrong, but I don't think they've spent enough time exploring different combat systems that work within Final Fantasy. But I think that that blend of like the actual combat and the action that you're pressing, you know, the buttons and doing combinations yeah. mixed with that turn base is probably what they're going to go for. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I just skimmed through the trailer really quick, and I, honestly, like I I'm really about it, but I've never really played any other Final Fantasy game, so it's kind of funny. That from my perspective, I'm like, oh, this is really cool because I really like like Dark Souls, and uh, and like Bloodborne and games like that, and it's like kind oh. of around like the same feel to it. We got some cool oh, okay. souls coming. If you like Dark well, Souls, you- <laughs> right? Don't give it away yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> wait. <laughs> um, okay. PlayStation then went on for Spider-Man, but then they had another surprise, which completely took me away because I forgot about this game. They revealed after so many years uh, of Warner Brother teasing it, Har- Hogwarts yeah. Legacy. This is the <laughs> Warner Brother um, Harry Potter game yeah. that we all heard of. Like a year and a half or so ago. Two years ago, I thought. Two, was he, two it years? Was, yeah. It was a yeah, while ago. A very long time ago. Yes. Uh, yeah. Were you shocked? Were any of you shocked that we saw this here? And what did you guys feel about the trailer? Because what the heck? I was so, not. <laughs> so I had to record a reaction for Spider-Man. <laughs> and I was really glad when it was like one of the first things shown for the show. And as soon as Spider-Man was done, I stopped recording. 
<laughs> and then I saw the WB logo come up, and I was like, "Turned it back on." <laughs> You're like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> They're about to show more Batman. <laughs> They're about to show more Batman. Uh, and like, granted, it's all good. I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, but it was cool. Like that, the game was finally revealed, yeah. and it looks super interesting. Um, although this is a tough one because okay. of time. I didn't think of, anything was uh, going to have more controversy than Black Ops Cold War this year. Yeah. So I thought that that <laughs> was the top of the controversy, Kate. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. sure is. Uh, <laughs> so there was so, a statement that came out that where it was said that she has like zero involvement. Uh, but she's it's, still going to get a piece of the pie. So I feel like there's two sides to this because I know that um, Twitter was kind of blowing up saying this is the wrong time, Sony. Like, I can't believe you guys are doing this. Mm. However, I do understand when you are making games, you don't have the creator necessarily of that um, intellectual property around to show you what you should and should not be doing unless right. it's a close partnership. And I don't think that's what that is here. Um, and they, we saw that statement go out that they said, she's actually not really involved in the game at all. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you, you have two choices here. You could say, and it's like horrendous the things that she is saying, what she's yeah. putting out. I do not, um, back that at all, but you do have like, there's two different ways to go to go about it. And I think you need a fair mixture of both or just however anyone feels comfortable. You could either like boycott the whole franchise or you you kind of stand up and redefine what Harry Potter means for you as either like someone who is a part of yeah. the LGBTQ plus community or someone who is not but a a, a, a supporter and um and a lot like ally of that community. So like I, I feel like this is a deeper discussion that for me as being an ally to that, but not being in necessarily that community, I feel like we would need someone to represent that community for us to give us their take on yeah. specifically that drama around that. I uh, agree. I agree. That's very well said, Camille. Um, and, and, you know, like Daniel Radcliffe, I remember said something very similar in that, like, listen, if Harry Potter meant something to you before this stuff, let, that meaning kind of still stick with you in some way. Like let, let whatever this franchise has done for you still, still be there because like, yeah, Jake Harrell, she, she created the IP. Like she is the one who's the root of Harry Potter, right? Like it's all, it all kind of leads back to her, but in the making of the movies. And then especially in terms of the making of the game, there are a lot of other people involved in the creation of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure, especially Especially considering they were very quick to be like, no, 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 J.K. Rowling has nothing to do with this. Uh, <laughs> it, it makes me believe that, like, even in the development, when they started seeing all the things that she, they were that she was saying, they were like, yeah, we don't want her associated with this stuff at all. We just want to make a cool Harry Potter game. But I don't know. I know it's tough for some people, like you yeah. said, who who come from that walk of life. It, it would probably be best to get their viewpoint you know, to, to, to really get a, a true idea of this situation. Um, but I mean, speaking on the reveal itself, like the game does look cool. It does look fun. I'm intrigued to see more mm -hmm. about what it's about. Uh, I didn't really grow up with Harry Potter or that franchise. So I'm not sure like in terms of the timeline and yeah. all that stuff where it's, it's supposed taking to place. be set in the 1800s. So like okay. for, like the actual Harry Potter movies. The th okay. the thing is though, I think I think this game is really close to being done, and I think for the past two years they've probably been sitting on this. They've probably been sitting, and because over the yeah. past two years, J.K. Rowling has just continually dug herself in a hole, yep. and She's I think every the time they've tried to get ready to <laughs> to announce it. She says something else, and they're like, "Well, now we gotta we gotta wait for this to blow over." And then it's like damage control, else, and yeah. yeah. And I I feel like maybe they were sitting on revealing the game um for that long. I don't know. It it does actually look um like it's close to being complete, um. But I do feel like the graphics may need some work. Like when I was looking yeah. at this this <laughs> game, funny. and yeah, it, it's very fabley, but it also looks yes. like early playstation 4 you know it doesn't look anything like playstation 5 and although this game was a great reveal for those fans i'm not a harry potter fan myself however i have played some of 
uh, the other Harry Potter games that are out there like on PC and stuff. And those are really fun. Like as someone who's not a fan, I actually enjoy Harry Potter games. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one, but the graphic situation kind of has me questioning if this was the right choice to show this game at a PlayStation 5 showcase. I thought it looked okay. I I wouldn't be too I wouldn't be Did too upset really if they that? if they stayed with that fable kind of lower cuz I mean if it is at the end of the day Hogwarts and Harry Potter is kind of a kids series so even if they did opt for more of that fable, less than refined look, I don't think it would be the biggest detriment in the world as long as the game actually has complex systems. If they're and going for, you know, an did, RPG, yeah. it's got to, it, exactly. it can't be just like, here's Hogwarts, run around and kind of do stuff, you know? <laughs> And I think yeah. that was kind of the confusion after the trailer. It's like, is this an is is this like an open world? Like, what is is this an yeah. RP? Like, it, we really don't know what it <laughs> is um, until we see more of the game. But I just wish it was more defined because there has been so many rumors around this game being like an MMO, like all these different attributes that you still have not clarified, and it's been so many years. So. I guess we just have to wait and see what will come from these uh, Harry Potter game. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to sit on it because when I watch the Cold it, War, what? Wait, I do want to say, say like graphically, it looks good. It yeah, doesn't uh, graphically look good. Are you guys? At, at least it's not PS1 Hagrid. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> or maybe maybe they should put him in there. It, it I, looks it looks fine. <laughs> I think for this gen, not next gen. Is it? Isn't it coming out on this gen too, though? Or is yes, it next but gen that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're having a showcase that's leading up to the price point of your next gen console, you want to show off why people should buy it. Why? It's no, and like, it's no Prince of Persia: yeah. Sands of Time remake. Okay, oh. sorry. Oh. Okay, you know what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What happened to <laughs> that? Bring that back. <laughs> Gotta bring that back. I, I was excited for Prince of Persia. I'm still excited for Prince of Persia. I'm just not as excited for Harry Potter. Okay, and I'll just leave it at okay. that. I'll sure. leave it at that. I was really excited for a more Black Ops Cold War action. Mm -hmm. I, I oh my god I, that game I, that game as a COD fan um I won't you know <laughs> go over all the details of what got me the alpha. Excited. I played a little bit of the alpha um, and it has a, you know, it, it's mixed. It's a mixed bag for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I have my thoughts on it. Maybe next time I will have to talk about Call of Duty in more detail. Um, did you play some of the alpha? I did. I played a little bit of it and I like it. I mean, it's, it feels, it feels like that black ops hybrid with kind of the aesthetic of modern warfare, if that makes sense. Like when with you first OPD jump in. Snipers. Yeah, when you first jump in, you're like, this is modern warfare, right? But then it has like all the mechanics of a Black Ops game. Yes. Um, but yeah, I thought that the, the reveal looked cool. The the gameplay that they showed looked pretty cool. The story stuff uh was interesting. Um, I just don't know, like I can't ever get extremely excited for a Call of Duty game anymore. But this is definitely the best years of Call of Duty in yes. a very long time. Yes, I and agree. And so that is, I'm sure, very exciting for people like yourself and a lot of other people out there who are a big fan of the franchise. You yeah. couldn't have said it any better. Wow. Malik, were you going to add something there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I look at Call of Duty like Fast and Furious. I think they should have stopped at Modern Warfare 2. But whoa, whoa, what? That's, whoa. <laughs> I'm just, you would have I'm, thought a car <laughs> jumping buildings in Dubai. You know? Like, all right, fair yeah, enough. Fast and Furious is like, going to go to space, I think, in their next Yeah, one. let's do yeah. it. I Wait, mean, is Call there Call of Duty, of Duty in space? space? They oh, already did that. Yeah, done. we've been there, done that. <laughs> Call of Duty has the standards for doing everything. Um, I want to you know we're running out of time with this topic so i just want to go over go the last it. few things that were revealed we got resident evil village so we got more of a showcase of resident evil village i'm super hyped for resident evil excited. so Yo, excited i cannot stand anything scary but for me resident <laughs> evil franchise the story of it is just so interesting yeah. that 
And they make these beloved characters like early on um, that I fell in love with. And to see Chris come back, that was teased in the previous trailer. Now we have more of an understanding of his role and Ethan now. Um, this whole story with his wife is just getting yep. crazier. Oh, yes. Yep. Yes. Oh, wow. um, I love it. it. It's it's getting so interesting to see. Do you think that this was where she came from? Like, is this the village that kind of bred Wait. her and her condition or whatever she is. I what feel like we're not going to find from out. The story here. I feel like we're not going to find out because this is probably a full trilogy. Like they're going to mm, go to Resident wow. Evil 9 and want to wrap it up then. So I feel like we're still going to have a lot more questions going into this one. What I wonder though is who's the guy at the end? Who's the big dude who looks like he's the penguin? Oh, the merchant. The merchant. Is that the merchant? That's the merchant. Okay. That's yeah. merchant. Yeah. okay. Yeah. That's what I figured. Um, but yeah, no, the gameplay looks really sweet. Uh, I love like the homie Chris Redfield. Like, <laughs> and he's like, and he's he looks like kind of an a hole. Like he's a bit yeah. of a jerk. Uh, and I love, I love it. that. I, it's amazing. <laughs> this, this, this is amazing. Uh, I'm I'm all in on this. Uh, I I think Resident Evil Seven was definitely not like fully reactionary, but I feel like it was kind of reworked to match that of PT because of how yeah. much people loved PT. Uh, and I love that. I love the direction that this franchise has gone in. I, w I still got to play Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Remake. Oh. Um, but I'm also glad that Capcom's able to get those games, the third person Resident Evil that a lot of people know and love, and also have the new stuff with Resident Evil 7, with Resident Evil 8 going into first person. And yeah. I'm just super hyped. I'm super, super hyped about this game. You, you all know how mm -hmm. I feel about horror stuff. Okay, <laughs> I know. He's <laughs> a I'm a bit of a psycho. None of this uh, is gonna affect you at all. So no, I'm no. super, super excited. We'll to see get him scared. in a trench coat and top hat in the corner of the streets, just saying, <laughs> "When you buy it, <laughs> what do you sell?" Wait, 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 it's pretty it's good. Selling. Wait, which, no, which merchant? Selling. What are you guys talking about? Because I, I did play this. I did play seven. Yeah, so the set, the merchant is from the older. Uh, I forgot what, oh, one, okay. what what Resident Evil that was. It was Resident Evil where they're in the village. It's with Chris. Oh. <laughs> like it definitely so wasn't an RE4 merchant. It, no, 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 no. Yeah, no. that guy um, had a very distinct voice. Yeah, yeah <laughs> what do you buy and what do you what sell? But, yeah. yeah, but you don't know. They may be doing that here as well. Like I think it may actually be the RE4 merchant. Um, that they're teasing here, just a reimagining of him. But Maybe. I do, I do agree what you're saying. I love the fact that they're going this route. There, Resident Evil Seven was more of a cinematic, really being involved in the entertainment factor of the story immersion. rolling out yep. immersion. Um, and I, I think that they're going to continue that here. Maybe with the successes of their remake, they see that they could still introduce more of the core elements of Re Resident Evil to their story. Um, so I'm hoping that we see that here. Capcom also surprised me though with DMC Five because yes. I almost. Mm -hmm. Fell yeah. off my chair when I heard <laughs> freaking Virgil's voice, and then I found out, oh no, it's not DMC six. We're yeah. just getting a special, special edition. edition. It's so cool. You get to play as Virgil. You get to play as Virgil. It's it still is cool. cool, but he's it's, not. It's an opportunity for everyone to play the game of the year from last year that for some reason didn't even get nominated. Game, for of, game the of the year. year. Oh, it should have. Uh, it should have. Been <laughs> it should have. Um, and you get to play as Virgil, so hell yeah, I'm in. I wanted to be play all, all of them, but I'll take playing as Virgil, yeah. And, that, and that's how I felt, um, about that one. Um, Alec, did you have any thoughts on DMC? No, I'm just excited to play it on PS5. That's I, yeah, that's about it. I'm just excited to play it. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation, play yeah, all did you? Yeah. I played. I think I was the first one like a long time ago. Yeah, uh, and you didn't like it. Were you not into like no? I was. Or... I was. I just there's just so many things to play. But yeah. what's League. What? But actually, there is a League of Legends character that just that's coming out today that is like heavily inspired by Dante. Actually. <gasps> oh wow! And, and like that Bayonetta, probably... and like being really stylish. So that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> but that's she's really funny. cool. I would probably try her later. Oh, that's cool. And I, I probably will. Game. I probably will not try her later because I'm not ever playing League again. 
But <laughs> um, <laughs> we also got some death loop in the PlayStation <laughs> showcase. We got some Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. That was a shocker as well. Yes. I didn't think we would have seen anything Five Nights. I don't really care, but we did. A Fortnite trailer, which, you know, whatever. Uh, we heard that sound of the bus. But what <laughs> almost gave me a heart attack was after their pricing revealed, you know, they came on, they're like, yeah, all right, now you know, but we have one more thing. They did the one more thing, and you heard that. That was so good. Yeah. 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 And then you started to see this emblem just starting to curve around, and then it was revealed God of War Ragnarok is it. We knew there was a new God of War coming out. We knew they were probably working about it, but now (laughs) we know we're fight. We're going up up against Thor, so it is taking place probably right around, right after the previous game, which is insane. I'm having freaking chills talking about it. And the thing is, that's not even the half of it. What got me out of my chair and almost on the floor uh, with heart palpitations is we're getting it next next year. year. Yeah, Next next year. That is Holy how you crap. end a showcase because I don't think anyone thought we would see anything God of War in no. this showcase and have the well, game coming out next year. That's crazy. I was actually. expecting a little tease from God of War, especially because Corey Balrog is it no Barlog. Yeah, Corey Barlog. Barlog. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh he he like changed his Twitter. Balrog's a Street Fighter stuff. character. Like, yeah. Yes. Uh, he changed his like Twitter avatar and header, and everyone was like, "Wait a second. Yes. Uh, this was like right before the place. Right before. Show. So, yeah. so everyone was like, "Hold on, hold on, hold on." And then, and then you just hear, "You must prepare yourself." And I was like, "Oh, oh, but yeah, that's the voice. <laughs> that's really <laughs> that so good. Caboose, that's really good, man." <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm really excited. And I'm surprised that they didn't do at least like a little cinematic thing, especially since it's next year. But hey. As I'm long not as surprised. as long as it, yeah. as long as I'm not waiting until 2025 for the next God of War, you know I'm why? in. You what know why I'm next not? Next year will be like actually it's going to be the year after that. No, <laughs> no, I don't think they would. <laughs> Sony Santa Monica has been really good with their times rolling out things. Obviously, with the pandemic, we never know how things could yeah. roll out. Um, but I've I remember after God of War, I actually had the pleasure of interviewing um some of their team about uh like the game and the development and i try to get like (laughs) some information on the next god of war and they just kept saying oh well you know the ending is what the ending is and now we know that ending is thor were you guys more like looking forward to possibly seeing something after this whole norse mythology or are you happy that we're returning to that kind of world i want to fight thor yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's really cool, but I did have like so many questions about Kratos's previous. Like, how did he, you know, like end? Up, how did they weave that into each other? Mm-hmm. You mean like from the first three into the yeah, the newest one? yeah. That is the one thing where I mean, it's like you kind of can piece it together. There's a lot of videos that do the the whole explanation of it all. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's that, they, they kind of gave them. like a. Yeah, they kind of just rolled it like, exactly. oh, well, we explained it. You know, he left. He left and he's <laughs> here now. And then his wife and he married. He has a kid. Most so annoying I kid just, ever. There we go. I That's can't it. can't wait to hear Kratos through the whole game just go, boy. Like, I just yes. need, I just oh, need oh, that Lord. nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> it comes in with an arrow yeah uh <laughs> it's gonna be fun i'm very excited for god of war uh, i'm super hyped that it's coming in 2021 and i can't wait to see more yeah i feel like it, it would have been better if this was a launch title but i'm gonna take it and i think yeah. after this full showcase a lot of people were questioning what the launch titles are um yep. what's actually coming out with the playstation <laughs> Yeah, a lot of those <laughs> smaller questions seemed like they were communicated after the showcase, but I want to talk about one of the launch titles that we know for sure, and that is, what is it, Caboose? Come on, give it to me. Demon Souls. <laughs> <laughs> that one. 
Demon Souls was actually uh, showcased here, and I've never played any of the. I I really didn't play the Souls games. Like I've tried them, um, but I've never. It's hard to get me into that whole medieval feel if it's not yeah, Fable or Legend of Zelda. <laughs> so um, for me, this showcase of Demon Souls actually looked really beautiful and makes me yeah. want to play. <laughs> How'd you guys feel? <laughs> Yeah, if you watch the video that was uploaded after the stream where you can watch it in like glorious 60 FPS. Um I've I've never been like a Souls like fan, but I I almost want to just get it because of how good it looks. Like yeah. I've never seen a game just run so smooth. And a lot of fans of the franchise were telling me that there were a couple of sections they showed during the gameplay where there would normally be like a loading screen, where there would normally be like a beat mm -hmm. before you get into the next section. And there was none of that here. Apparently wow. you were just going yeah. into these new environments, completely new areas on a dime. And that's the one thing that's super exciting about the next gen in general, Xbox and PlayStation is these SSDs and what they're going to provide for games is going to yes. be incredible. Um, so to see even bits of that, whether it's from Ratchet and Clank running into completely new environments in a second, or whether it's in something like Demon Souls where you would normally be running into loading screens and there's none of that now. You I think it's died awesome. and now you wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's awesome. I think that's super, super exciting. And the game looks, it just looks super crisp, like extremely yeah. polished. Give well, me it right now. This is, yeah. this is crazy. It, it actually looks, looks good. so good. Yeah. Well, well this is Eddie no Prince of Persia. No Prince <laughs> <laughs> At Ooh, E3 2019, yeah. <laughs> their whole thing was loading screens yes, when they yes. were talking about it because they had the Spider-Man like tech demo that they brought people in for, yeah. and that was their whole thing about you no know, loading screens. You know, these big open worlds now you can just kind of traverse them. So I, I'm excited, especially in a game like Demon Souls. That's gonna be that's gonna be something to look out for. I think regardless of how you play those kind of games, whether you love them, hate them or play them because you hate them, um, it, it's gonna be a great experience. Mm -hmm. yeah.